Hi, this is PD at Bergsberg Arcade at BergsbergArcade.com and this is tutorial 172. Uh, so we're just going to pick up where we left off on our little glass tutorial. So we had our gender changer set up. It needs to be the object. Let's go ahead and actually create a script for that as well. So I'm going to shrink this down. And I'll just right click on scripts, create another C sharp script, which I'll just call gender changer. And we'll load that up into model develop. And we'll paste that in. Now we are going to add two textures to this to be able to swap the textures between uh, the male and the female one. And if I had uh, an actual 3D object, uh, we'd actually switch the actual game object itself. But since uh, I only have the textures for this, I'm just going to do that. We'll be swapping uh, game objects out a little later on. With, uh, with our actual character. So you, you get to see both. So let's create a public. Texture 2D. And I'll just call it symbols. And it is an array of two. So I'll just save that off, come back in. Uh, make sure this is the right size. Select our gender changer and drag that script onto it. There we go. Now I'm just going to shrink that down, open up our symbols, tell it we have two, and then just drag them on. So I'll do male first, and then I'll do female. Uh, let's quickly save off my scene. And just to make sure that we're actually starting off at male, I'm going to script that in. So first off, let's check to make sure that we actually have uh, something saved in our symbols. So if we don't have at least one thing in symbols, we'll just send out a debug warning. And if we do, uh, let's set our renderer dot material dot main texture to equal the first one in our symbols. Let's save that off. We'll head back into Unity. Uh, let it recompile. There doesn't seem to be any errors. And if we start it up, well, it's actually just going to be a male. Uh, and you can actually see just the side of it a bit. So I'm going to rotate just a tad. Uh, we'll rotate this way. And let's actually switch to the female to start with. Uh, right there. And if we start it up, it should switch to male when it starts. There we go. And of course, you can also just leave it blank to start with. And that'll work as well. Great. Now, when we hover over it, we want the user to know that they can actually interact with this. So uh, let's create some other events here. Uh, I'm going to go below update. Mm, I don't think I'm actually going to need update. So I'll delete it and we'll just add it if we need it later on. I'm going to create a public void on mouse over, or sorry, it's on mouse enter, I believe. And also a public void on mouse exit. And we're just going to call the highlight function that we created uh, previously in the, uh, let me see, what was it, the chest? Our chest script is going to be pretty similar to that. This is going to be private, void, and I'm just going to call it highlight. 
just to show the user that um, this item is interactable. And I'll just start it off at color. And I'll just create a variable called color is equal to color dot white. That's going to be our default color. And then we'll just check the variable. If we have uh, it being passed in as glow, that means they're hovering over it. Then we'll want to set the color to equal uh, let's say color uh, let's do red and then down here we'll just tell the renderer dot material dot color and we'll just set it equal to color and then all we have to do is just call these function or uh, call this function from our almost enter and exit and when they are hovering over it we want it to be true and when they are not hovering over it we want to pass in false there we go nothing really new there let's go in start it back up I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work with the transparency but we'll find out Oh, there we go. That's not bad. I was kind of afraid it would try to highlight the invisible colors too, but that seems to work, right? You can actually tell it's kind of slanted a bit, but I'll take a look and see if I can find some uh, 3D models of it. It wouldn't really be that hard to make. It's just I don't really have the time right now, so eventually I'll get around to it. But anyway, that works. Now let's make the on click events or on the mouse up and on mouse down. Uh, these have to be public, void, on mouse. All we really need is an on mouse down. Uh, I believe that's the right function. Let me just throw a debug in here. And I'm just gonna say click. I'm just testing just to make sure it's the right function. I've been playing around with a few other APIs for different uh, programs. So uh, when I click on it, I should get my little message down here. Click, yep. So that was the right function. So when I click this, I basically want two things to happen. Uh, one, I want to go to the next material, uh, which will be the next symbol. And I'm also going to want to be able to send out a message to our mesh changer and tell it to switch arrays. Uh, from whatever one it's in, either the male or the female, and switch back to, or and switch to the other one. So we'll just start off with uh, switching the material here, or switching the texture. Sorry. So first thing we want to do is check to see uh, how big our. Uh, we'll get, we're going to have to store an index actually, and this can be private. And I'm going to start it off at zero. And I'll just come down here and I'll just check to see if the index is greater than oops symbols dot length minus one then index is equal to zero. So we just wrap it around. And of course, every time we click, we automatically want to increase the index. And let's change the material. So renderer dot material dot main texture is equal to symbols. Uh, and the index and to be honest we should get rid of this zero up here and paste it in there and 
I don't really like the word symbols. I just want symbol. I generally, even in an array, like it to be singular. So I'm just going to right click on it, hit refactor, hit rename. Just get rid of that S. Hit OK. And it'll actually go through and everywhere that that variable name was, it'll change it for me. Now, because I did change a public uh, variable, that means I am going to have to reassign stuff to it. But since we only have two, it's really not that big of a bother. So we'll see, it's right here. So we go two, and I do male first, then female. Sorry, girls. And let's start it up. And now when I click on it, it goes to the female one. All right, so now before we start sending them a message over telling it to switch uh, what array or uh, what character mesh array we're using, uh, we're gonna have to keep a few indexes in there as well. Uh, I'm trying to keep the length of these videos back down closer to 10 minutes again, and it looks like we're already over 11, so I'm gonna call this one done, and we'll just uh, pick up where we left off in the next one. I'll see you then. Bye bye.